Good morning and welcome to Trail Grazers, where we focus on good food for the trail. And that is exactly what we are going to do today when we make our Mexican stuffed pasta shells. I'm quite excited about this recipe. You know, I'm on the internet quite a bit because I do research on all kinds of things, and including foods. And so every once in a while, the recipe pops up that is quite intriguing to me. And so um, we're, I try it out. And that's what we're going to do today. Now, this recipe was a little bit difficult to decipher. I think it was probably written by someone whose um, first language was not English. And so I had to do a little bit of extrapolation. Now, what I have done with this is I have rewritten the recipe. I'm going to give you the link for the original recipe because I don't want to take credit for someone else's work. But I have rewritten the recipe with how I interpreted it and what I'm doing specific to uh, help this get be a great food for the trail. And that recipe you can download free. Simply go to our website, and here is the address for our website right here. Click on the top menu, click on Recipes, and it will be there as a free download. Now, I have done quite a bit of advanced work, so you don't have to see me cooking the hamburger and grating the cheese and all of that kind of thing. So basically, there are, um, I think, four parts to this. Um, before I get into that, though, I want to um, tell you that these are the, these little uh, bent go boxes that I just love to pack for our lunches when we are on the trail. Um, most of our trips from here on out are going to be car trips. And Jim and I have been so busy working on a project that is going to keep us home for a few more weeks. And then we'll get out again. And when we do, it will most likely be car trips. And these work perfectly for car trips because we can just pop these boxes right in our um, little portable refrigerator in the back seat of Jim's car or my truck. And then we take along our car oven. And um, so these can, we have used um, freeze dried foods in these. We have packed these with leftovers. I have made Birox. Recent video from last week was about Birox. Birox get kind of squashed in these because these are a little bit uh, narrow. So I'm always looking for foods that would fit nicely, the, the entree down here. And I think this one will work great. And then with um, other accompaniments up here, like um, vegetable strips or cherry tomatoes or avocado slices or whatever. So that's what we are aiming for, is to be able to use this food for this. So let me explain to you what we're going to do. No freeze drying on this. What I have not done is prepared a meal specifically for those Bentco boxes and then frozen it. But I'm going to freeze it in a particular way, just in my regular freezer. And I want to make that very convenient. So we'll get to that toward um, a little bit later in the video. So here are the different parts of this recipe. First of all, it starts with jumbo shells. This is the empty box. These are the shells and they are pre-cooked and drained right here. Then there is a um, sauce right here that is one can of enchilada sauce and a cup of salsa mixed together. Then there are two kinds of cheese here, a cup and a fourth of cheddar and a half a cup of mozzarella. Then there is a meat mixture. And here it is. And this is a pound of hamburger, a medium onion diced. And then I added eight ounces of, no, four ounces of um, cream cheese and two tablespoons of taco seasoning. So we are now ready. And what's going to happen is I'm going to place the shells on these two pans. Now, the original recipe called for only eight ounces of shells. They come in 12 ounce packages. So I cooked the whole package. I have four of these little pans and I'm doing this specifically because if I need to get another pan out to accommodate all these shells, it will be an easy thing to do. So I'm going to clear the deck here and we're going to come back and fill shells. All right, here we go. I have put about three tablespoons of the sauce in the bottom of each of these and I did have to get another pan. 
I put 12 shells on each one, so we have three dozen shells here. And there were probably three shells, maybe four, that during the process of cooking, they uh, cut in half or big chunks out of them or whatever that aren't suitable. So I'm just going to go through now and put about a tablespoon of meat in each one of these. And hopefully we'll have enough. And we will come back when I have that done. We have the oven preheating, so it's giving us some background sound. That's what you are hearing. So the next step, now I filled all of these. The first couple that I did on camera, I was spilling meat into the pan. What I learned was that if I lifted up the shell and held it over the meat pan and filled it right there with my thumb, I could move the meat kind of under the curl and then put it back and there was no meat spilling at all. I'm now going to put the rest of this sauce in this measuring cup. And I'm just now going to give each one of these shells a little dab of this sauce directly over the meat. Our oven just dinged, it's ready. So now I am going to cover each of these with a little foil tent. So the pasta doesn't dry out too badly. These will bake for 30 minutes. Then I will open them up and put the cheese on. And then we'll melt the cheese and we will come back when they are ready to take out with the melted cheese and ready to do the next step for preparing them for the trail. All right, they are out of the oven and now they are completely cooled. So I'm going to dish them up individually and place them right here. And we are going to freeze them individually. All right, here we go. I've got 30 on here, and I'm going to save these six for our lunch today. They're left over here in this little pan. So these will be our lunch for today. So we're going to freeze these and then I will show you how we're going to package and then we're actually going to um, put one of these into our car oven and see how they do when they are frozen. So we will come back after these are completely frozen and we're ready to put them in the um, car oven. These are all frozen. They've been out there in the freezer for several hours. This is just a regular freezer. And I'm going to put most of them right in here. Because they are frozen individually, they're going to stay separated. And it will be easy to just grab and go when we want to uh, put some in these little boxes that we're going to do in just a minute. They froze beautifully. All right, so these are going to go out in the freezer as part of our stash for when we want um, to, oh, there, now they're closed. Uh, when we want to uh, load up our little uh, lunch boxes and head out someplace. So that'll be a quick and easy way to go. So I'll put those out in just a minute. Meanwhile, we're going to open up our bent go and put two of them in. So I would put these in directly from the freezer. And then depending on our trip, these could easily go in our little travel refrigerator and then they would thaw 
or I could take them directly in the freezer from the freezer and put them in here, leave them out of the refrigerator so they thaw before we put them in our car oven. Or like we're going to do today, I can just take them out of the freezer and put it right in the car oven, zip it closed. Because in here we would have fresh veggies and we would not want those to go in the oven. Then I'm going to use our baby bluetti right here. So opening this and plugging it in. Let's see. There we go. So the red light is going. It is pulling, um, it's 38 watts, and we are 99% charged, and so it is heating up. Because these are frozen, it would probably take an hour and a half, maybe two hours to heat up and be ready for either lunch or dinner in the car. We're just going to leave this alone and let it do its thing, and we will be back when they're hot and ready to eat. The ones that we had for lunch, the six that were left over that didn't go into the freezer, they were fantastic. We really, really liked them. So this is a wonderful recipe and we're very excited to have these. So we will see you in a couple of hours when this is hot and we'll show you what it looks like. I just checked and our food is done. It took only an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to lift it out. And the great thing about this is that um, it doesn't get too hot to handle. I am going to unplug it from the Blue Eddy. And it's all steamy. The cheese is remelted. And so I'm just going to take a little bite and see if it tastes the same as the ones did at lunch that Jim and I really, really enjoyed. Smells so good. Tastes exactly the same. They're so good. Oh, just the right amount of heat, spice heat, and they are just the right temperature for eating. They're not overheated. So this will be an absolutely perfect, perfect meal. I'm so thrilled to be able to add this selection to our repertoire of uh, foods that we can take with us on the trail. So thank you so much for being with us. Hope you try this recipe. It is really good. And we will see you soon, hopefully right out on the trail.